I'm gonna play Xerath for 10 hours because I suck at skill shots. So what better way to improve than play a champion with only skill shots? Let's see if I can convince anyone I'm scripting by the end of the video. So before I start, I should probably go over my runes and build. Keep in mind, this is the first week of the new season, so this could be subject to change over time. My runes were a pretty standard first strike page to help me scale and have a little bit more mana in the early game. My build usually went Luden's Companion, Shadow Flame, Death Cap, Storm Surge, and then a flexible last item depending on the enemy team comp. I will also say that against a lot of assassins, Zhonya's Hourglass second is pretty good, but you do sacrifice some damage. My first game started off great. I was getting good poke in and dominating lane, until I got a little too aggressive and got hooked under tower. No worries, it was my first game. I'm sure I'll learn from this mistake. Or not. I would also like to say my first ults were not that good either. It wasn't all bad though. After those first four deaths, I didn't die for the rest of the game and even went on a killing spree. Well, oh God. no deaths until the very end of the game. Yeah, I'm dead. Sure, whatever, man. Also, I didn't realize how hard it was to get mid. Throughout this video, I have almost as many games playing support and top as I do playing mid, which was my primary role. Anyway, for game two, I actually got mid, and in a typical Yoan fashion, he went way too aggressively and died to a gank. And to my surprise, I actually killed him 1v1 in lane just a few minutes later, just to die to a gank because I tried to push instead of just backing. I'm not gonna lie, I kinda smurfed this game. Sure, I missed a lot of skill shots, but I was in the right place at the right time, did a lot of damage, and was already feeling a lot more comfortable with Xerath's playstyle. Also, I just want to say that knockup animations look weird in Xerath's ult, and it can kind of mess with your depth perception a little bit and make you miss skill shots. Anyway, during the second game, I was learning how important it is to take your time with Xerath's ult. Like, in this fight, you can pretty clearly see which ones I actually aim, and which ones I just rapid fire out. Oh, we got two, baby! Just taking an extra half second to line up your ult can be the difference between looking like a god and looking like a complete fool. After my first two wins, it only made sense that the League of Legends gods would try to balance out the universe in some way, so they gave me not one, but two AFKs in my next game. All things considered though, I think I played pretty well. We won a nice 2v2 in the enemy jungle to start off the game, followed up by a nice ult kill on Kennen after he dove our top laner. Got him! But considering we had two AFKs, we surrendered at 12 minutes. I wasn't too tilted though, because even though I lost, I think I played pretty well. So, I just want to say, the clip you are about to see might be one of the worst plays of my entire League of Legends career, so please go easy on me in the comments. Dude, there's no way I missed every ult! So after a uh, rough early game, the whole team was pretty tilted, and right when I was about to give up, Warwick got two amazing picks in the jungle, which led to us getting Dragon and Baron, and just like that, we were back in the game. And a few minutes later, there was another big fight, and while Aphelios and I were fighting for our freaking lives against this Mundo, the rest of my team won the fight and just ended the game. So at about the two hour mark, I realized, I suck at skill shots! So, I took to YouTube in order to learn more about Xerath, and these are the main tips that I found. 1. Autoing in lane whenever your passive is up. Yes, you get more if you hit a champion, but hitting a minion is still a lot of mana, especially because you run out of it so fast in the early game. 2. In order to land more skill shots, start your combos with your W. Even if you don't get that center bonus damage, the slow will make it a lot easier to land your E and your Q, which is more total damage. 3. Take your time with your ult. If you panic and just press your R over and over without thinking, you're probably going to miss every shot and look like a complete idiot. And for a bonus tip, if another lane is low, fast push the wave with your Q and W. This way, you can move a little bit to another lane and get free kills with your ult. Right away, I could feel myself getting better and taking my time with my ult made me way more consistent, even if it wasn't perfect yet. I will admit though, bad positioning and my lack of mobility is definitely something I'm going to have to work on. In the end, I didn't really do much this game because my team was just nuts. All I had to do was not int and just let my team take care of the rest. Wow, my team was good that game. Unfortunately, next game I got support. 
And even in support, with every game, I could feel myself getting better at my ults. Taking my time was so much better than just mashing my ult button hoping something would hit. But for every good play I made this game, I made a bad play a few minutes later. Oh, you're kidding me, I wasn't out of the range of that? Things got even worse when we lost a big fight at Dragon. It was one of those fights that started out looking pretty good, but as the fight continued, I realized all of our ults were down and they still had all of theirs. I definitely made a few misplays this fight, but we lost this so hard that I don't think it really mattered. The final nail in the coffin this game was when we were calling for Baron without our ADC. We had no damage, the enemy team just showed up and kinda destroyed us. I did get another kill with my ult before I died, which was nice I guess. And yeah, it didn't take long for my team to start another random fight which we just lost and it cost us the game. Game 7 was a little bit sad if I'm completely honest. I think the scoreboard sums up this game pretty nicely. Jokes aside though, I don't want to blame my team completely for this one because I definitely could have played a lot better. I mean, just look at the last fight where I positioned up way too far, ulted right in front of Alawi for some reason, and missed several skill shots. Not to mention I definitely made my fair share of stupid plays like TPing behind the enemy team even though I'm a glass cannon with no mobility. I did manage to steal one of those uh, void grub things at the start of the game which was pretty cool I guess. Things got even worse after that game when I got placed support again. My biggest problem on support is I just forget about my passive so I run out of mana super fast and lose all pressure in lane. Then my misfortune got caught out after... Actually, I don't know exactly what she was doing, but she got caught out and it led to me getting dove right after. But what we did in bot lane didn't really end up mattering because Vladimir and Singed were so fed, they kinda just won the game on their own. After this game, I was so fed up with support Zareth, I changed my secondary to top. My Q times would be longer, but hopefully I would get mid more often. Thank goodness I got mid again this game because I was actually starting to get really good at roaming with my ult. Unfortunately, during a lot of these roams and dragon fights, I wasn't getting the kills, but it's okay because my Samira was actually pretty good and it was okay playing around her this game. With my Samira getting all these kills, all I had to do was sit back, poke, and not die. Right? Unfortunately, this was my Samira in the final three fights of the game. Ultimately, these three deaths led to Baron, Dragon, most of our base, and then eventually the defeat screen. To be fair, I was also a little to blame this game. My big mistakes were having terrible CS and after cleaning up a big fight, giving my shutdown over to Fiora and losing my Magi stacks. By the time I got to my 10th game, I was an absolute pro at roaming with my ult. And it was just so funny knowing the enemy team had to be super tilted when they would barely win a fight just to die to a roaming mid laner a few seconds later. And this game really started going well after a Rift Herald fight where we destroyed the enemy team and got the objective. This was still anybody's game, but as long as we didn't do anything stupid, we were definitely ahead at this point. And cue something stupid. Basically, we tried to set up a little death bush, but for some reason our Maokai ran away from us, so we decided to follow. Then the real disaster struck when Master Yi came from behind, and without Maokai CC, he melted our entire team. We tried to put up one last fight at Baron a few minutes later, but Master Yi and his team were so far ahead at this point, it wasn't really much of a fight. A lot of these losses during this challenge were super close, and I can't help but think if I was just a little bit better at Xerath, I maybe could have carried a couple of these. My next game was, uh, interesting. For starters, I was top this game, which my team was surprisingly okay with, and then I died because I didn't expect Teemo's burst damage. No way I'm dead here, right? Fuck! Luckily, I got my revenge on him over, and over, and over again. But to be totally honest, my lane did not matter this game at all. I mean, our misfortune was a smurf who had 21 kills in 21 minutes. She was averaging a kill a minute, which was just insane. Oh yeah, I was able to redeem myself for missing every ult on that Zoe back in hour one. Thank goodness I didn't die here, because that would have been embarrassing. Luckily, my next game, I was placed back in the mid lane. Unluckily, the very first fight in the river did not go exactly how we had hoped it would. But it doesn't matter because once again, I roamed bot and absolutely destroyed the enemy misfortune with a nearly perfect ult. It really is amazing to see the difference between my ults at the start of this challenge and now. I mean, it's like watching a completely different player at this point. They're both dead. Cool. This is another game where I think I played legitimately very well. In the end, the game came down to a final dragon fight, and even though I didn't do much in that particular fight, I made a lot of plays around the map which got us ahead enough to win the fight pretty easily. 
Also, I did not expect Zed's ult to do that much damage after landing just one Q on me. If I knew it would do that much damage, I probably would have just used my Zhonya's. All right, buckle up your seatbelts, ladies and gentlemen, because this game was absolutely fucking insane. It started with a crazy invade where Nocturne just flashed into our base at level one, followed by a pretty easy solo kill in the mid lane. Then I got another kill when I roamed bot again. And a few minutes later, there was a huge fight bot lane where I played out of my mind. Holy shit! Oh my gosh, that's crazy! Oh, we got a double! Oh, we're going crazier! I don't do damage with my autos. Doing what I can, though. Triple kill, baby! And even in a fight where I missed literally every ult, I still landed all my other abilities, did insane damage, and got a double kill. Okay. I missed most of my stuff there. But she has to run in a straight line around. We'll take it. Unfortunately, as soon as I became legendary, I was shut down after my team lost a pretty big dragon fight, and I got trapped in the dragon pit. Help me, please! My stacks! No! But it didn't matter because at this point I was doing absolutely disgusting damage and I was finally starting to think I had mastered Zerath. In the end, we got Baron and I even managed to get a kill during Nocturne's ult. Am I killing? Holy shit, I cannot wait to play one more game of Xerath mid because I'm really starting to get the hang of this. And I'm top again. But in all honesty, it wasn't going that bad. Despite losing my tower because of a Ziggs roam, I was winning lane and was about to take the tower myself. And even though my build was a bit weird, I was still actually doing good damage in fights and we were able to win a really important dragon fight, even though I missed my last ult charge on Misfortune. The main reason I went this build was because I was scared of getting dove by Cassante once he got his ult or if I got ganked or something, but as it turns out, this build actually did pretty decent damage and if I built Shadow Flame instead of Seraph's Embrace, I think I would have done even more damage. No, seriously, I was actually surprised how well this pick and build were actually doing and after a big dragon fight, we were in a good position to win the game. But in the end, Briar caught out our Cho'Gath, and because I tried to save him, I ended up dying. Then Senna tried to save me, which caused her to die, and just like that, the game was over. Honestly, I think the last four hours of this challenge were way better than the start, and I'm very proud at how far I came with Xerath. If you want to watch more videos like this, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and most importantly, watch the video on your screen now.